Hello, and welcome to another Astro One video presentation. Today we'll be discussing terrestrial atmospheres. To help me as always is my assistant, Steven. What's that for? It still hurts. It still hurts. Oh, don't be such a baby. When looking at the terrestrial planets, one property that we can compare is their atmospheres. Here on Earth, we take for granted that we have an atmosphere and just how unique it is. As we look at other terrestrial atmospheres, we could see just how different our Earth would be if it didn't have the atmosphere that it has. Mercury has no permanent atmosphere to speak of. What would our planet be like if it didn't have an atmosphere? But fortunately, we do have an atmosphere. Mars also has an atmosphere, but it is roughly 1% as big as Earth's. What would the Earth be like if it had a much thinner atmosphere, like Mars? Here I have a flask with some water in it, sitting at room temperature. Watch what happens as I pump the air out of the flask. It turns out that the boiling point of water depends not only on the temperature of the water, but the pressure exerted on the water as well. With less atmosphere, there is less atmospheric pressure pushing down on the water, and the water boils at room temperature. To show you that the water has not been heated by this effect, Stephen will now hold out his hand while I pour the water over it. No, I won't. If you want to show them, you do it. Oh, you really are a baby. Because Mars has a limited atmosphere, it is unable to support water in liquid form. That isn't to say that water can't exist on Mars, just not on the surface as a liquid. We know that frozen water exists beneath Martian polar caps, and we believe that liquid water may exist beneath the surface of Mars. If a smaller atmosphere can have an effect on a planet, what about a greater atmosphere? Here we have an ordinary gas can. Watch what happens as I pump the air out of it. Gases have mass, and therefore weight. Atmospheric pressure is nothing more than a measure of the weight of a column of atmosphere above us. The more atmosphere a planet has, the more pressure it exerts upon us. We don't feel this atmospheric pressure here on Earth because we're accustomed to it. But if we went to a planet like Venus, which has roughly a hundred times more atmosphere than Earth, it would crush us, just like this can. The compositions of the atmospheres of the terrestrial planets are different as well. Earth's atmosphere is roughly 80% nitrogen, 20% oxygen, with trace amounts of other gases. Mars and Venus have atmospheres that are almost completely carbon dioxide, with trace amounts of other gases. Venus has a thick carbon dioxide atmosphere. Carbon dioxide is the gas which we exhale, and which planets inhale. We find carbon dioxide in small amounts here on Earth, but the presence of this carbon dioxide is what leads to the greenhouse effect. Venus, with its thick carbon dioxide atmosphere, is an example of the runaway greenhouse effect. Here I have a container with some water in it. As I put in some dry ice, frozen carbon dioxide, the carbon dioxide will sublimate turning from a solid into a gas. Because carbon dioxide is more dense than air, it won't rise up out of the container, but rather spill over. Watch what happens as I pour the carbon dioxide into another container filled with lit candles.
Fire needs oxygen in order to burn, so when the flames were surrounded by the carbon dioxide, they went out. Because carbon dioxide is more dense than the air that we breathe, it extinguished the bottom candles before the top one. While some gases are more dense than the air we breathe, others are much lighter. Here we have a tank of helium gas, and here we have a balloon filled with helium. As I'm sure you're aware, helium is a very light gas. If I tie this balloon and let it go, it will rise into the air. Helium is one of the lightest gases, along with hydrogen. Both hydrogen and helium are two of the most abundant gases in our universe, and they were part of the solar nebula which created our solar system. Yet we don't find either of them in the atmospheres of the terrestrial planets. Why not? This is because, being closest to the sun, the terrestrial planets are relatively warm, and the warmer a gas is, the faster it can move. Light gases, which would have originally formed with the terrestrial planets, would have enough energy to escape their gravitational pull. The terrestrial planets just aren't massive enough to hold on to these light gases. So there you have it. Join us again next time for another exciting astronomy concept. See you next time! Steven, did you leave the helium tank on? Whoops. What do you mean you lost the audio? Whoops. Well, you better do something about it. No cheesy dubbing over the original.